dictionaries contain other values, just like lists and tuples do. But they're not sequences. Instead, they hold a relationship between a set of keys and a set of values, where each key has a value. Let's take a look at how they get used. Okay, so what I'm going to store in my first dictionary is called numerals, and it'll be a mapping between Roman numerals and their values. So I has a value of 1, V has a value of 5, and X has a value of 10. Let's take a look at some of the features of this syntax. We have curly braces surrounding the dictionary values, where each key is separated from its value that's associated with that key by a colon. So we have a bunch of pairs of keys and values, numerals is a dictionary, class dict. Now notice that I entered the key value pairs in one order, and then when I evaluated numerals, they came back in a different order. Dictionaries are not an ordered type. So you can never rely on their elements coming in any particular order. But what is reliable is that whatever key you've associated with each value remains. So X is still associated with 10, I with 1, and V with 5. Now, these are also mutable data types. So um, we can look up their values associated with a particular key. So this is the value 10 is associated with the key X but I can also change the value that's associated with a key. So I put 1.0 in here, but if I change it to just 1, and then I look at numerals again, I is now bound to 1. Now we lost the old uh, key value pair of I goes to 1.0 because each key can only have one value in a dictionary. That's just a rule of how it works. Now we can add new key value pairs that weren't there in the first place to a dictionary using the element assignment statement as shown. So now if I look at numerals, L is bound to 50 and I have all the old bindings that I had before. Now what happens if I look up something that's not there? I'll get an error. However, there's a method called get which takes the key that you want to look up and then a default value to return if that key is not there. So that's a safer way. It has no error, but if I do look up a key that's in there already, well, I'll get the value bound to that key, 10, rather than the default value. Let's see what else I can show you. So there's a way of creating dictionaries out of lists, but you have to have a list of pairs. So here's a bunch of pairs. Um, 3 and 9, 4 and 16, and 5 and 25, oops, and 5 and 25. Now, in order to get a dictionary out of this, I would have to surround it with a call to dict. The dict constructor then takes each pair and interprets the first value in that pair as a key and the second one as a value. Now, another way to get the same thing is with a dictionary comprehension, which will take k and associate that with the value k times k for k in range 3 through 6. So that gives me the same dictionary where I have k is 3 and k squared is 9, k is 4, k squared is 16, k is 5, k squared is 25. So that's what a dictionary is, is it associates values with keys. Dictionaries are unordered collections of key value pairs. That's important to remember. You can't rely on their order. And there are some restrictions to dictionary keys. One is a key of a dictionary cannot be an object of a mutable built-in type. What's mutable? Well, lists and dictionaries are mutable. So what happens if we try that out? If I try to make a dictionary that associates 1 to 2, 
That's no problem. I can even associate the tuple 1, 2 to 3, let's say. And that's also no problem. So you can have compound keys, but they cannot be mutable. I can't have the list 1, 2 associated with 3 because this list might change. So I get this error that says unhashable type list. That's referring to the type of this key being a mutable value. And while uh, I can have a tuple there, that's no problem. I can't have a list anywhere within that tuple. So I can't have a mutable value inside an immutable value. That's still not acceptable. And you can't put a dictionary as a key to a dictionary. So a key cannot be an object of a mutable built-in type, and two keys cannot be equal. Well, because when you assign to a key, you actually are replacing the value that was there before. There can be, at most, one value for any given key in a dictionary. So this first restriction that you see above is because of the way that Python implements dictionaries under the hood. Now, I can't teach you all the details of that in this course, unfortunately, because I have to leave something for you to learn in a future course. But it's just a restriction that we'll have to deal with. And the second restriction, that keys cannot be equal, is on purpose. I mean, that's an intentional consequence of what dictionaries do, is they associate a particular value with each key. Now, what happens if you want to assign more than one value to a key? Well, of course, you can do that with the tools we've seen already. If you want to associate multiple values with a key, just store all those values in a sequence. You can use any value you want in a dictionary, including a sequence. 